What's going on, friends? Welcome to McFarland's Corner. It is September 12th, and uh, some big changes happened in the last uh, 24, 48 hours since we talked. So we talked on Tuesday. We did a Tuesday rundown for you. This is generally why it's important, um, in my opinion, for me to do two rundowns a week. For those of you that are really, truly following fishing a lot, uh, your weekend avid angler tournaments, things like that makes it worth your while, but it really helps you understand what's happening. Uh, maybe you're coming pre-fishing, etc., a week or two before a major event. And you want to know these changes. We went up from 401.39 yesterday to 401.50. Was a soaker rain, not a heavy rain. We didn't get a lot of rainfall, um, but we got enough to soak the ground, and the lake has come up about an inch. Temperatures holding 77, upper 70, 79 degrees by the end of the day. Been some really nice, cool weather. <laughs> and what this has done is made a big transition. Number one, the lake has kind of had its turnover, beginning turnover. Uh, signs we're seeing from those, uh, uh, from the effects of the turnover. Remember the turnover happens in 24 hours. Think, you can Google it. The biologists, scientists, stuff about will tell you that we mankind, we don't even know when the actual turnover part happened, meaning the upper water column goes down, the bottom comes up, the flip-flop. We see the aftermath. So you're going to start to see some aftermath, which is nasty water, yellow bubbles, methane, just ugly stuff. Stay away from that, by the way. Get out of that water. Find good water. Find good, clear, cleaner, blue or Lake Fort green water. But the fact that we came up an inch brings in a lot of fresh water. So when that's happening simultaneously, a lake is turning over, you're having low oxygen conditions, and then you get an inch worth of rain on a lake the size of Lake Fork, right? That's good fresh water. We have vegetation. I promise you that the bite is shallow, 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 shallow. So whether you're throwing frogs, topwater poppers, underspin, spinning baits, or just pitching and flipping little creature baits in Texas rigs in amongst the junk, be looking shallow. Um, I can tell you that as of today, you know, during the rain and stuff, it's tough, easy to find bait fish. The bait fish have really moved shallow, lots of bait fish shallow. Um, and that's one of the keys is to find not just bait fish, but bass that are with or chasing that bait fish. Um, so there's so much baiting for it. Sometimes you can be on bait and you're not on fish. Uh, it's not quite as simple as that. It's finding bait. Usually it is. Birds, bait, they go together. Find the birds, find the bait, and, and you know, again, when they're in transition, you got to remember that. Give it a few more days in that same area where you saw the birds today, for example. The birds in the bait today, they weren't bass with it yet. Well, they just moved. They're the first to move. Give it a day or two, go back to those same areas, and you might see different results. Kind of like deer hunting. You know, they're not on the corn feeder all the time. So, know where the bait is. That's one of the keys going into fall. I really like this. I like sitting here in this 78, 90, I mean 78 to 80 degrees. However, we are going to have a couple weeks of warm trend again. It looks like we follow, not warm trend, but it gets, about, it gets hot. What that will actually do to the lake and how much will warm back up again, it's hard to say. Um, you know, it really is. It's hard to, just to say. It really depends on how cool the nighttime temperatures are. If we have some good cool nights to counterbalance the heat of the day, then we'll be okay. We might warm back up again, which does a flip-flop with turnover. If you get me heavy, you know, we, we're summer, we start to have some fall, and we have summer, and we have fall. It's, it's kind of like the joke how they say in spring. Uh, we got that early spring. Uh, we got winter in Texas, and you got the, the first spring in Texas, and you go back into the second winter, and so on. <laughs> it's, you know, the goofy thing. We'll get the same thing sometimes in fall. We get you know, a couple, a couple of falls, the teaser fall and, and the real fall. Was this the teaser fall? I don't know. Let's see what the weatherman, how, how, how right he is. If it's only a week again, if it just heats back up next week, I think we'll be okay. Think shallow. you got the big bass flash coming. Think shallow. You've got the Berkeley behind it in October. Definitely shallow. And that's my best advice. The north end of the lake is kind of where I present would, would spend most of your time looking, doesn't matter, east side, west side. Um, but just, again, good vegetation, the lake's healthy. And um, any tips? Let's see, what can I give you for tips for this weekend? Um, I think I kind of already did, you know. Um, just just kind of 
don't move too much once you've found some good areas that have bait fish and, and, and the right cover and things for fall fishing. Um, just stay with it. Maybe slow down. But I, I promise you, those fish may not be there today. They may not be there just right away. But with fall coming, that, that particular um, bite that you would expect in the fall, it, it, it's right there. It's just right there on, on all the lakes. Um, remember that we give a upgraded, much more detailed fish report, exactly what the bite is, what the colors are, um, you know, what depths the fish are being caught from, what part of the lake is the best to be fishing. Um, we give that in our members. But we also in the members give a lot of the other lakes. And the reason I'm sharing this is, is in the members channel, um, as I'm giving these other reports from other lakes and other guides and stuff, I'm seeing the same thing on Rick Hubbard. Um, I'm seeing the same thing on Bodark and, and Possum Kingdom. And I'm seeing the same thing pretty much, you know, Lake Levon, uh, as we're seeing here, same kind of temperature parameter, same things happening to the fish, late start nose turnover. Um, etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera. But anyways, where I'm going is is um, it should settle pretty quickly, and, and I expect all the fishing to be good, really good fall fishing this year. Let's give you some crappie on pork. Jackie Wiggins says, despite the cooling trends, um, the fishing continues to be steady for the crappie. You've seen a lot of the big white crappie in trees in 18 to 28 feet along primary and or secondary creek channels. Um, some of the trees are holding multiple fish. But a majority of the fish they see are solo. That's interesting. They're real scattered. And that happens again when the lake turns over. Um, you're going to see fish scatter because low oxygen. So brush piles are also holding some fish uh, in the same potential areas. Uh, it sounds like some more of the black crappie are starting to stack up on some road beds and things. Maybe getting closer to, uh, and some bridges, maybe getting closer to a fall type bite. It's not quite here yet, but it's coming. Um, he said small hand tight jigs seem to be the best. Little plastic baits will work. That bite's going to get better as fall goes for the plastic bite. Um, but that's to your crappie here. And here's the deal. Also on Bodark, and if you're a crappie fisherman, you want to really go catch a bunch of crappie, go to Bodark. Just north of Dallas, the new lake that opened up. Everybody's talking bass, 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 bass. Man, Bodark, the people that are going crappie fishing are filling limits of you know 12 to 15 inch crappie in no time at all, every day. Um, it doesn't really have the real huge crappie that, that we want to see, some, but it's just, man, it's easy. These fish haven't been fished for. They haven't been caught. They don't feel the pressure. So if you really want to head on over to Bodark, that might be good. And uh, But I know you guys are coming pre-fishing this weekend. I know you are. Don't be afraid to throw a spinner bait in the backwater. And here's another tip that I really like to help you out with. You know, my, when two tips we're going to go ahead and give you as public members because of the tournament that's coming up. All right. So here's a little more of the information, the taste of like what we would give you in the members only channel. So definitely be up in the arms, whether you're up in the Running Creek, Coffee Creek on the east side, whether you're up Little Caney or whether you're up Birch or, or even Lake Fork Creek. Get up in the junk. Get way up in there. Find the bait fish. Find the birds. Little underspins. Those are my favorite. Um, but little underspin is the deal, right? It's a, such a great search bait. Um, little three-inch underspin. Remember gold blade if it's cloudy, silver if it's not. Match the hatch. If you see bigger bait fish, change the size of that underspin and go to a larger one. This is a great search bait. It's kind of like a crankbait um, you know, in the spring. It's perfect search bait in the fall when you're around the bait fish. The only dilemma you'll have is sometimes you'll get a lot of vegetation will ding up the blade here if you're having that kind of issue this is the taste of the members only then you're going to go to a swim jig i recommend a santone swim jig you know kind of keep it compact if you're on small bait go ahead and be larger with a with a good boot tail trailer if you are but the swim jig will stop that problem if again same thing if you know any of your blades are really catching up with a lot of grass because you're in that much heavy junk go to swim jig Okay, swim jigs one of my favorites. That guy's there is just a taste of how much in more detail you would get in the members only channel. I'd even tell line, test speed, where to use it, exactly how to work that bait. Um, so that's your invite too. Come on over, look in the description below this video, click on the members only link and get much more report than you're getting here publicly. All right, big shout out to Lake Fork Marina for hosting this event.
the, the, uh, they just do such a good job. The store is so awesome. Get almost all everything you need right there at the store. Um, the restaurant, Jamie's has done such a good job improving, cleaning up, and making a, a, you know, a much better atmosphere for all of us and better food. Check out Jamie's while you're there. Maybe you had a bad experience a long time ago when it used to be other somebody else owned it. Check it out now. I, I really think you'd be impressed. Jamie's Restaurant. I eat there almost every day, certainly every time that I'm there. And I love it. It's great, great food. And oh my, the pie. Everybody else, um, great weekend. Be safe. I know that we're going to see some pressure this weekend because the big bass splash is coming. Remember to be considerate. Um, it's a public lake and you have a right to be anywhere you want to be. But respect um, and, and courtesy goes a long way. All right. Thank you guys. Appreciate you for watching. God bless and I wish you all great fishing.